Hey friends and family, I got something fun today. I wanted to just play for a second. How awesome is that? I don't think anyone could make this sound bad. It's one of those hang drums or hong drums. Yeah, I just found this today and I had to have it. I played around with it at the gem fair that was going on this weekend and yeah, I had to bring it home with me. <laughs> so I've been playing around with it for a little while. And yeah, I can see myself playing with this for hours and hours. Like, yeah. That's so awesome. I love all the colors. I love how it sounds. Yeah, and I'm just in love with everything right now. But wow, it's been a like a very, very full week. And yeah, I've been very creative and playful and a little tricky too. Like there is some interesting, tense, intense challenges that came up this week for me. And I will ask my higher self what wants to be shared and said about that, expressed shared about that but I was just coming on uh, it's because it's time to review it's been a couple days and it seems like oh my gosh like what used to take like a week you know happens in a day and it's just it blows my mind like how how much <laughs> is coming in and coming through and just happening like every day Every single day is so full. And so just loving life right now and feeling really good. Feeling at ease, which is different than, yeah, I felt a couple days ago, which I just felt so much pressure. Like a camel being squeezed through the eye of the needle, <laughs> the eye of the needle. It was just so intense. Um, yeah, just grateful that I have been practicing kundalini yoga because it helps me realize when I'm like holding that tension in my belly and just like to relax. Like relax into love, it's okay. <laughs> relax and be love, it's okay. Just love and just be here and be all my love. You know, just be all the love I can be right now. So that's what I get to choose for me. And that's what I get to offer, yeah, for those who are willing to receive. And so, yeah, I have my escape coat here and been playing with that and working on that. And it's been super fun and super uh, therapeutic, super, super healing work, yeah, to choose. And I had no idea, like, actually it was going to, like, show me like as much as it has and be like such a catalyst like to help propel me forward and help move me forward out of the past and so i just want to yeah take a little peek here at it but yeah all these words yeah all these labels all of these untrue toxic garbage words <laughs> that are just used yeah to dismiss steaming devalue and dishonor like who we really are and used by the controllers for divide and conquer you know because we're easier to manipulate and control that way if we have like a so-called enemy and so yeah, just remembering that we really are all on the same side and there are more than two sides and there is like, yeah, just the one really when it comes down to it. And so, yeah, well, there you are. But yeah, I really enjoyed like all the colors, all the colors and then just kind of writing it and like just, I don't know, it's not like it's fancy or anything, but it's like, it's neat. And so it just kind of puts a different spin on like the cruelty that these words actually hold or the charge that they held for me. And so 
it's yeah I'm still processing and still looking at these things but yeah it was super fun and I don't know what else I'm gonna do with it like when I finish the the words here on the bottom uh, there's just a few more words to fill in and uh, then the back is pretty much complete and then I guess I'll see like what else I can do with this coat what else strikes me and <laughs> strikes my fancy or tickles my fancy so I do have like yeah a lot of things for mixed media and maybe I'll just get some creative wild hairs and uh, go from there but yeah it's a work in progress and we'll see what how it wants to unfold and how it gets to be but yeah I'm super glad I chose this little project for me and I had everything I needed and I'm always receiving everything I ask for so I'm just grateful like to be more aware of what I'm asking for as well like and what I'm opening to receive and so with that said there was something yeah that I read the other day in this book by Arnold Mindell. It's called The Dream Body and Relationships. And yeah, I got a couple books of his a couple weeks ago because yeah, I just was drawn to that, like the dream body. And and I do, I appreciate this author. I've, I had a book by him called The Shaman's Body that had really awesome exercises in it. And um, just like I would take it camping with me and stuff because that's the only time that I, I would make time for myself to read and like to do those kinds of things and I would always think oh I'll get around to doing these exercises and things but yeah I never allowed myself to like just get in there and do my do my thing and do my work but it's just like so full and amazing lately where it just seems like it, this is just so fun and I, there's nothing I'd rather be doing than uh, you know my work and my play and just enjoying like every way that I get to show up and be me and love and play and so yeah even when I feel like things aren't going my way or there's or I'm getting in my own way it is just so fulfilling and rewarding and just feels bright right now and so I'm just so happy to be in that place like really even when things feel like really really terrible like I know that I have what it takes to get through this and I know I have so much love and support all around me and within me to draw upon so it makes me really humble and I feel so grateful and thankful and I just want to thank life and love and beauty and creator and the goddess and mother earth and all of my family, everyone who's connected to me, everyone who's part of me, everyone who's played a part in my journey. I just want to express that gratitude, everyone, even the adversary, but especially the adversary. And I forgive, thank, bless, and send her love. So... I've been, yeah, remembering some things and also envisioning or receiving the myth of Anana and Ereshkigal and the ascent and the descent, yeah, the journey to the underworld and then the ascent and the coming into wholeness, the coming back together, um, unifying, yeah, and linking all yeah all parts of the whole and so I want to share just a few things um, yeah the other day I just flipped this open because I was like okay why not let's look and see what this book has to say I haven't you know looked into this book yet and so at the time like when I did flip it open and, and read a little bit about it, um, yeah, uh, communication, I think it was. It was about communication, communication structures. Yeah, chapter four, communication structures. <clears throat> and it was all about depth psychology and signal theory, which was interesting. And so I read, yeah, a couple things that did make a lot of sense to me. Sometimes 
um, will have, will experience an emotion. And like there's the primary reaction that we have to feeling that emotion. And then, then there's a secondary reaction that we have to, to having that emotion. So yeah, it's interesting because sometimes like when we have certain feelings, we'll feel guilty or we'll feel silly for feeling those things. And then we think we're wrong or bad or not right for feeling what we're feeling. And then like we can, yeah, kind of get lost uh, in our stories or like just keep cycling around, um, try avoiding those feelings because we think we're wrong for having them and different things. And so, yeah, that's what I've been experiencing like a lot and working through the last couple of years where I'll have that like initial reaction of, you know, anger or sadness or whatever it is. And then like, yeah, sometimes I'll have that, I'll notice that secondary reaction where I'm almost like trying to suppress that uh, because I think it's wrong for me to feel and then I try and spiritually bypass it and then it just like get all tangled up in a, in a, in a tangled web of my own making, you know? And so it's just kind of interesting just to watch certain things, be the witness, call in that neutral witness, that compassionate witness, and, and just observe things. And one of the things that he said in here that really like, okay, I'm going to put that in my pocket. I'm going to hold on to that nugget. Um, it was like, just keep doing what you're doing. Like, don't try and like force yourself to like make a huge shift or a change. Just keep doing what you're doing. Like observe what you're doing. Notice what you're doing. Just like, yeah, kind of like let the performance pressure go. But yeah, keep doing what you're doing, but just do it more consciously. And so that's like been my mantra this week. Just keep doing what I'm doing. Just do it more consciously. And that has freed up a lot of energy and been great for me. And so let's see if there's anything that wants to be shared in here about this. So I'm just going to read a little bit about Jung, Carl Jung. So Jung's study of the unconscious indicated that any unconscious figure which turned up in a dream could disturb relationships as long as the figure remained unconscious. Jung identified many figures but often spoke of the animus and anima in the psychology of women and men, respectively. I believe Jung would say if he were to have used communication concepts that the animus usually appears in women's double signals when she sends out an opinionated statement while identifying only with her primary process, let's say a lovely and accommodating personality, how nice to see you, a woman might say, while the animus appears in her stiff body. The anima appears in men's behavior most frequently in moods. I'm upset, he might say, while the anima raises his voice, oh, I'm not upset. I'm not upset, he might say, while the anima raises his voice to a miserable or a hysterical pitch. A man who has been insulted won't admit it, but becomes moody, gets up and walks out while claiming to be very cool and rational. Jungians would say that he is in the anima, whereas the animus appears as a male figure in the dreams of a woman, the anima appears as a female in men's dreams. Jung also spoke of the shadow, a dream figure of the same sex as the dreamer. Jung did not identify the shadow as a communication signal, though naturally the double signals of an unconscious shadow figure can complicate communication. We need only think of the flirtatious female and male figures in our dreams to understand how those figures unconsciously influence our communication. Jung worked on dream figures through a combination of ana oh, an analytical interpretation, direct confrontation with the client's unconscious behavior, and active imagination, where the client could work alone at home on the dream figures by allowing them to unfold their messages to the ego through written dialogue. In this procedure, the dreamer fantasized and played with dream figures, giving them a chance to express themselves in detail, usually through writing. The value of such analytical work can scarcely be overemphasized because through such imagination, interpretation, and understanding, the individual dreamer gets a chance to meet, integrate, and dissolve parts of her or himself and realize them as double signals. One conclusion we can draw from this is that if people do not understand you, you may consider the possibility that one of your dream figures is sending out unintelligible information because you do not recognize and appreciate it enough. 
One of the implicit goals behind the individual analysis was to reduce communication difficulties. The fact that it does not always produce such effects indicates that there may be other factors disturbing communication besides an individual's unconsciousness of specific dream figures. Experience shows that even an individual who is very aware of her or his behavior produces double signals when the figures behind these signals have not appeared in the sender's dreams. Thus, communication trouble is not only a function of individual unconsciousness, Trouble can arise in relationships because partners are not aware of how their own signals can be temporarily produced by the double signals of others. That's interesting. So thus, communication trouble is not only a function of individual unconsciousness. So it relates to collective unconsciousness. Trouble can arise in relationships because partners are not aware of how their own signals can be temporarily produced by the double signals of others. Yeah, so uh, this kind of... Reminds me of something I was reading in uh, The Return of the Divine Feminine and the World Soul by Llewellyn Von Lee. And yeah, that kind of reminds me of, yeah, how the collective wound can seep into our own little individual wounds and be amplified in a lot of ways. And we have no idea where it's coming from sometimes, like where all it takes is like, one little feeling of like jealousy or something to come up and then like the toxic soup of the collective wound can come in and seep through that little feeling or that little wound of jealousy and then it can be all encompassing like all, encom all encompassing feelings of jealousy and so it's just so interesting yeah like just seeing these things and yeah how sometimes we can think like all of the emotion that we're carrying it's all ours but some yeah a lot of the time it's really not it's we're just we're just picking up on it or yeah our own just kind of yeah um yeah i don't know our, our own activated pain yeah can kind of activate that collective pain and make it seem so much heavier than it really, really is or needs to be. And so, yeah, that's all I have to say about that for now. We'll see what else wants to be said. And so here, um, con conscious and unconscious, primary and secondary. The term conscious and unconscious have proven useful in individual work, but need refining when applied to the behavior of groups. Consider a typical example of a couple arguing about the garbage. She is screaming, take it out, and he groans, no, <laughs> with an insulted and offended expression on his face. <laughs> we could say from a Jungian perspective that if she dreamed about an irate man, and if he dreamed about a moody, moody woman, she was in the animus and he in the anima. But her screaming and his moodiness are double signals which require greater awareness. She could work alone with her anger and learn to bring it into their conversations in a useful way, and he could investigate his moodiness and learn to express his hurt feelings in a more complete fashion. Let us call the signals they intended to send their primary process. So let us call the signals they intended to send their primary process. The primary process communicates the information about taking the garbage out. Though intended signals are closer to awareness than the secondary material and are easier for the communicators to notice, they are not conscious. Thus, I am going to use primary where the term consciousness used to be employed. The reason primary processes are unconscious is that uh, though our couple know they are talking about the garbage, they can neither stop their discussion about it nor control it. They are only vaguely aware of the myths and beliefs that govern their intended signals. Who takes out the garbage is a complicated issue with roots extending through their childhood, culture, and religion. Usually a little probing is needed to find out which childhood, culture, and religious systems shape the beliefs behind the argument over the garbage. The unintended information, the background battle between her anger and his moodiness, I call their secondary process. Secondary material is more difficult to reach. The man and woman might admit that they are talking about the garbage, yet they will be unable in the beginning of their discussion to admit to the rage or moodiness in the background. Once acknowledged, they won't be able to process these signals easily without training. Thus, in process work, the term consciousness refers to awareness, while unconsciousness usually means lack of awareness of primary and secondary processes. 
So once acknowledged, they won't be able to process these signals easily without training. Thus, in process work, the term consciousness refers to awareness, while unconsciousness usually means lack of awareness of primary and secondary processes. So here's the iceberg analogy. Let me give an example. A woman tells me that she is jealous of another woman and a quick smile flickers across her face. Her smile seems to say something, but I do not understand its message. I think it might be a double signal, so I ask her to do it again. I say, I'm interested in your smile. It is a winning smile and I need to know more about it. And she is a little embarrassed, but she does it again. The time, this time she says she is smiling because she is embarrassed. She feels she should not be jealous. I encourage her to amplify the smile and embarrassment. I encourage her to amplify the smile and embarrassment. She says, it is as if my father were punishing me by making me feel embarrassed of my jealousy. He says it's infantile to be jealous. So we discuss the father-daughter problem and she realizes that she constantly makes herself feel guilty for ordinary human needs and emotions such as jealousy. Her primary process was, I am jealous, and her secondary one was, I am stupid for being emotional. Both were outside her control. The point of the story is that behind the little smile was an iceberg. There are dreams behind the double signal too. She dreamed that her father was trying to kill her mother. He had always considered his wife to be far too hysterical. In this woman's process, the father and inner figure had to change to allow the mother's feelings out. All this was found behind her smile. So I thought that was super, super interesting. And I'm just gonna leave it right there for now. Maybe, maybe my voice just went up. <laughs> like I wasn't quite sure. So that's funny. Uh, hypnotic effects and relationships. I don't think I've read this part, but I'm getting a nudge. So the reason why we become dreamed up and double signal back is that we are unconscious of double signals. Empirically speaking, most people become so fascinated by the primary processes of a person that we, as a general rule, pay attention only to the intended verbal statements. As a result, we are blind to their unintended double signals and appear hypnotized. We focus only on intended messages and, as if we were in a trance, we filter out the unintended ones. But this hypnotic trance never fully succeeds. Though we intend to focus only upon what people say, we also perceive everything else that they do. But these perceptions happen unconsciously. We do not know that we are aware of them. In my case, I was unaware of her head shake and I was also unaware of why I reacted irritably to her. Hence, my irritation becomes unintentional and is split off from my intention to be cool. Thus, it double signals back to her. We develop two systems of communication, one of which is intentional or primary my coolness and her accommodating quality, and an unintentional mode which is dreamed up consisting of signals reacting back and forth without either of us being aware of it. Dreaming up was a secondary communication process for us in the beginning of our conversation. It was unconscious and unintentional. Projection of the accommodating figure is a primary process. She could identify with her effect against me and yet its roots are unconscious. Dreaming up and projection help us to understand some of the mechanics of couples communication systems and to comprehend where some of the individual responsibility may lie in communication trouble. And so, yeah, that's interesting. And I am gonna do a little more homework with that and read a little more into that. Yeah, I just thought I would like to share that and I kinda just got a nudge to um, bring it down because I'd remembered what I had read a couple days ago and thought, okay, that. Yeah, that's probably something that is going to be valuable. Yeah, and I had no idea why, and that's, yeah. And, I, and I'm sure, like, it'll unfold and, yeah, reveal itself. So that's super interesting. And I'm not even sure, yeah, where that leads, but we'll just take a breather and a moment to be. And cheers, drinking my aloe juice today. Getting on that wagon, getting back on that wagon of taking care of me, like uh, being a little more consistent with certain herbal remedies and yeah, things that are good for me, things that I know benefit me. Yeah, things that nourish and support my well-being and feeling good about that and uh, taking it step by step and it's a work in progress and 
uh, I just get to, yeah, allow it and choose it and let it be. And so, yeah, that's, that's what I get to choose for me. And so I got to, um, yeah, have a really nice, fun morning today. Went over to the gem fair and I brought some friends home with me. Yay. So I got this. I wasn't expecting really to find like, I mean, I went, I was going to go treasure hunting, but I had no idea what I was going to come back home with. And uh, I got this uh, beautiful piece right here. Yeah, that one jumped out at me. And so I brought her home with me and I found um, some awesome tangerine calcite. And yeah, uh, just been drawn to the orange and the yellow lately. And so I was like, yes, I definitely need more orange in my life. And isn't that color pretty? Yeah. It's just like, totally, it makes me want to take a bite out of it. Like it's an orange. <laughs> so, and I also like found some really cool raw amber pieces. Yeah, a bunch of raw amber. So yeah, I was nudged this week. Yeah, to get some more amber and uh, to help me remember, to help me remember some things. So yeah, had to, a conversation with the sweet grandmother angel, yeah, who guided me to, yeah, work with Amber for remembering. And so that was like really nice. And so what brought that up was something that didn't feel so nice, but, um, but it was an opportunity and it was a gift. And uh, I always love how my words come back to me too like about how some things are so super easy to be grateful for some things are like it's just so easy to be grateful for them but there's other things that kind of come into our lives sometimes that are not uh so easy to be grateful for and um yeah just kind of remembering that like um What is being offered here? What is this asking me to see? What is this um, offering to me? What is this opportunity? And so, yeah, there was some some things that came up that stirred up a lot of emotion for me this week. And yeah, but it did like encourage me just to go inward and um, to trust myself and to call in and call on my help. I see that candle flickering behind me, so yeah, reflected on the mirror, so I'm gonna turn my chair a little bit. <laughs> see that. But um, yeah, so I am grateful for, yeah, everything in my life and all of life's experiences, and I am making the room and I am making the space uh, for all of life's sorrows and joys and making the room and making the space for the adversary and for that challenger to challenge me um, because yeah, I, I'm gonna embrace my challenges and my challenges really do help me grow and help me learn and help me know like how strong I am and how capable I really am. And yeah, I haven't really believed in myself for most of my life. like. I believe, I believe in life and I believe in others and I believe in love, but I really haven't believed in myself very, very much, <laughs> you know, often enough. And so, yeah, I'm changing my tune there and, um, willing, willing to believe in myself, willing to, yeah, trust myself. And so it has been a lot about trust as well. So there's a lot of themes coming up around trust and distrust. And so... We'll see what wants to be shared about that. I just want to share like some things from my journal. And I just flipped open to, yeah, this page. And I'll just go ahead and read what I have. It says, Diamond Consciousness and the Black Light of the Dark Goddess, the one who is within, the one within kissed by the sun. Saboeth and Sophia, Aurora and Michael, twin flames, soul activations, and epic reunions. Walking home, coming home, welcome home. Home is where love lives. Home is where the heart is. Home is heaven on earth. Home is where them fuckers ain't. Home is where the garden grows, the space that holds all growing souls. 
I had a good day today, I got a good nap in, I had beautiful love exchanges and true gratitude, appreciation, and reciprocity from morning until evening, nightfall and in, and in the in-between, now and now and now, and always surrounded by love. Love, let it be. Let me and we see clearly, please. Dancing the spiral, the spiral dancer, walking the spiral, coming home. Ivy, look into stories, lore, connections with the vine, purple flowers rising up, heart-shaped leaves, prolific and abundant, growth support, magic, protection, and holly. Purification and refining. The blacksmith, the alchemist, the forge, fire, water, air, metal, earth. Hammer and anvil, lightning rebirth. Clarity, the thunderbolt of my mind. I invoke thee, Om Vajra Sattva and Vajrapani, whom Vajra pay for strength clear seeing through the darkest nights. May you be happy, may you be well, may you be at peace, walking meditation. So that's what I've been nudged to do. And yeah, also like just a sitting meditation really. So like when I'm sitting on my porch and um, like either riding or something and having a smoke or just chilling and being with nature out there, like um, I find myself lately like sending that to my neighbors and yeah. So may you be happy, may you be peaceful, may you be well, like all that. And that's just feeling good right now. So I just wanted to add that. So breathing, let the breath breathe you. Dedication, devotions, patience, faith, trust, grace, strength, kindness, creative, creativity, and play. Dream stories and epiphanies, ahas, and puzzle pieces being put into place. The correct order and sequence and divine symmetry i trust this process and i am willing to be fully free fully me fully all i am for me and we letting go letting go letting go through feeling and allowing all of my feelings to move and be moved through me messages dreams and receptivity willingness to pay attention and be open inquisitive allowing curious engaged and non-attached in the world but not of it Letting go of identifying myself with the surface and outer projections. Going inward to reclaim true vision. A true vision with precision. And so there's something interesting on September 21st. Uh, a dream that I had. An interesting dream this morning. Something happening in the media or the media community and the false structures of domination and control. Uh, the false structures or the false power <laughs> structures the truths coming out transparency or the loosening of tongues of the liars and fools it will be harder to keep lying and keep up the ruse just let it go come what may let it go there are more people wanting substance and to listen to or to seek the truth to be open to listening receiving considering another's or a wider point of view looking into other than what they've been spoon-fed or force-fed through the false matrix's web of illusion and control, the slavery debt system, the victim judge mob mentality programming, and the toxic push and pull. Hero guru damsel in distress, damsel in distress, covert fragile narcissist, codependent dynamics, the dependence of the fascist state, viewing bondage as security, and compliance as safety. The illusion is slowly dissolving, crumbling, and falling the hell away. LOL. Love always. Sorry for being an asshole. LOL. Thanks for playing that asshole for me so very well. I appreciate the parts we've all played and get to play for each other and ourselves to help us come into balance, alignment, and reunion and break out through our fears, pain, and self-imposed restrictions, limits, blocks, and rigidities. Let's all break through. So, I am willing Watching and observing the monkey mind at play and watching with an open mind, flexibility, letting go of judgments, attachments, and overthinking, letting go of all I think I cannot be, letting go of stories and everything that keeps a false hold on me, letting go of resistance, letting go of my fears, doubts, and insecurities, letting go of the need to please, letting go of the need to control or see things as I want them to be, Let, letting go of the need to understand the need to be right, the need to be in control of how others might see, think, perceive, and believe, how others might see me and my energy, how they see the world, how they see anything, how they choose to see, be, and receive. 
Letting go and trusting me. No need to control or manipulate anything. No need to defend, pretend, or play act at being something that I think they want or they need or I need to be. I am willing to show up. I am willing to be free. I am willing to learn, grow, share, give, and receive. I am willing to forgive, let go, and just be all that I am through all that I be. I am willing to allow and love all of me we. I am willing, so love, just let it be. I am willing to let go of my clinging. clinging. I am willing to let go and embrace not knowing, the wisdom of not knowing, the wisdom of knowing that I know nothing. Telos, that which is ultimate rather than perfection, surrendering and holding space for this inner knowing, Slow down, be present, mindful and receptive, self-reflective and allowing, self-respect, self-esteem, self-realization, coming home to and through my whole well-being. Seeing fears and illuminating them, bringing the unconscious into the light and making the darkness conscious to come into balance, alignment, harmonic resonance and reunion with my whole self. Peace and tranquility, inner peace, radiating outward from my center of being, being one, being whole, being free, being one, being one at peace, the unity of peace, through being one at peace within me and we. I am enough, we are enough, love is enough, and all is right to be. Who am I now, and who am I yet to become? I am love, and I am loved, I am this love, so be. And so, yeah, the things, certain blocks. So I've been calling on Ganesh to help me with these blocks. And yeah, I feel like the way has been cleared in the last couple days or so. And to tell you the truth, I really don't know. <laughs> because time is just so funny um, right now. And it's hard to, <laughs> to really gauge like how much time has passed. Like, uh, especially when there's so much packed into every single day now. And so I'm like processing so much every day. So it's just, it's wild and it's, it's really, really amazing and cool though. And so I have, yeah, this journal here that I'm, I'm pretty much finished with. I just have like this very, very, very last page like to fill up this. And I started on August 16th and now it's September 26th. So that's not too shabby of a month right there for the writing and everything. But um, uh, yeah. And I've realized, yeah, if I fill up, you know, one of these sketchbooks every, like, five or six weeks, like, come on, come on, come on, Jen, get on that book. Get on that book. People want to read that book. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my next, yeah, little project I get to start on. And it's just, like, all these little works in progress, but everything relates to everything else. And it's funny, I just <laughs> flipped my page open, and it, it comes to the book where I was writing about my book. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just kind of fun. So unclock, uh, uh, unclock, unclock the cock block. That's so funny. That was a slip. So uncock block the cock block, LOL. Why is it so fun to be clever? but so scary to be brilliant. And so that's like one of my questions, like, man, it's so fun. Like I've realized like in a lot of different ways, how much I like to indulge in thinking and like thinking about things and, and playing with things in my mind, but because like it is enjoyable, but sometimes it drives me up the wall and it drives me fucking crazy. And so it's just kind of funny that like, yeah, sometimes yeah, I know, like, that I'm being clever or I'm trying to be clever, you know, and it is kind of fun to play that way, but sometimes, like, when there's the most, like, brilliant wisdom that wants to come from within and be shared, that's when I, like, kind of feel the most afraid, you know, um, and so it's just a, a fear of being seen and of shining my light, that's what that is, and, and, and not being in control, so, it was just silly being being silly, and so, it's, why is it so scary to feel, you know, to be brilliant, or fully shining in embodied light, and Om Shanti Om, Om Shanti Om, Om Vajra Satwa, Hung, and Hung Vajra Pei, Om Ram Ramaya Swaha, Om Shri Maha Lakshmi Swaha, Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo and Namo Kuanshi and Pusa. The camel and the oasis in the desert, the mother's love and endless well of love. 
Yeah, an endless well of infinite love. We hold that water and that life within us, inside, that well that recedes and fills, but it never dries, never fades, and never dies. It never fails, never wavers, never falters, never gives up, it never denies. Wow, some relief from that pressure and tension and nervousness. Oh my gosh, just keep doing what you're doing, but do it more consciously, practicing non-attachment and authenticity. Wow, it's so intense today, like a wild ride on the seaside cliffs, carried away by the waves, learning how to trust again and trusting I can fly. The power of flight does not come from me. It is the life force that moves through me. I trust it to hold and carry me, singing, surrendering. The fall serenades me, knowing this power doesn't come from me, but knowing I am and this power is me. The power of love, wisdom, and generosity. This power of love, God's love, reciprocity. Trust love to show me and we the way, love always. I'm willing to. I choose to. I trust love to show me the way. So be open to consider whole other possibilities and see into everything. Through seeing into me and we, I invite the universe to go to work on our behalf of all of we, all we are, and all we shall be for the highest good of every being, for the greatest growth and the best, the greatest possibilities for every being. I'm looking at and looking into the wounds of the divine feminine and love and forgiveness, trust and integrity, holding space tenderly, lovingly, presently, acceptingly, and truthfully, lovingly and honoring, allowing, opening, revealing, allowing the revealing, all this love and this story to play out. Allow this unloved love, the story to play out. Allow all this love to unfold into and through itself as we return fully home to ourselves. That's what love's talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what love's all about. That's what the trickster's all about. The adversary challenging us to see things and cut through the distortions and the blocks. Yeah, the old programs, to become aware of the old programs and the old patterns, the wounds, the story loops, and the phantoms. Mine seem to be mostly about doubts, insecurity, and trying so hard to please, trying so hard to be all things, <laughs> to all beings, yeah, and that's silly me being silly. So, trying so hard to please, make peace and be comfortable, to be all things to everyone, or the ghost, or the adversary, so it's either all or nothing. Yeah. So trust is so super important, trusting ourselves in each other. I choose to trust myself. I choose to open myself to, the, to, to, to that trust. I trust life. I choose to trust life. I choose to trust myself and I trust the inner wisdom. I trust her visions, precision, a prayer to see through her gentle eyes, a prayer for us all to be free and forgive ourselves and our history, an opportunity to repair and be true to we, to trust ourselves and forgive all things and see Eris at play, the trickster at play. So Eris is um, the sister of Mars in mythology, in Greek mythology. And um, have, I don't know if you've ever heard the story about the golden apple, but yeah, she likes to rile people up sometimes to see like what she can, uh, she can get a rise out of them. And so yeah, the golden apple, she like tosses it into a full party room and then just watches, like, and sees what happens, you know, just to see, like, how far are they going to go to, you know, with their greed and their pride and their vanity and all that. And so it's kind of funny. And sometimes, like, how we can play into those lies uh, unconsciously. So the golden apple, the prized possession, idealism, pride, vanity, greed, the rose-colored glasses, what we don't want to see. She laughs because those who fight to the death over the baited prize are so vain and ignorant they don't realize that they have the whole apple tree, priceless, precious inside. The bargain without knowing, not knowing our own value and being distracted, de deceived, led astray and led away from our true worth and value, the infinite currents within, the infinite currency within. Come back home to self, come within, focus inward, self-reflection, self-realization, like self-love and self-acceptance, self, yeah, self-knowing, self-acceptance. Through the lens of love and her gentle eyes, 
the one that is unafraid of any dark. Nothing, nothing, there is nothing that can keep her from loving us, not even the worst parts of ourselves that we could possibly hide. She won't condemn and deny, or reject, judge, or cast aside. She knows the value of the whole, and all the infinite and perfectly perfect strengths and limitations, weaknesses, blind spots, potentials, and natural gifts. All of it is necessary to be whole, for love to grow, change, and give. To play and interchange, to transform, recirculate, recalibrate, propagate, and recreate, regenerate, radiate, emanate, or, or stagnate, dim, dwindle, depreciate, and degenerate. Seriously and not seriously, how much of what we see or experience only exists in our minds? All is mind, most of the time, lol. The illusion of space, the illusion of time, the illusion of separation, all in the mind. So the adversary can help us challenge our own bullshit, face, grieve, surrender, and acknowledge what is falling away, what is dying, what is dying within ourselves, and what is dying within our world, what is falling away. Yeah. So the adversary can help us challenge our own bullshit and help us see where we're denying or rejecting ourselves, undermining, undervaluing, underselling ourselves, overlooking or possessing or hoarding ourselves or our gifts. Yeah. Parts of ourselves. Yeah. Where were we protecting or defending ourselves? What are we attached to or identifying with, playing into, being carried away by, playing at, play acting at, or playing at being? We all have our unexplored power and our wisdom, our unclaimed shadow aspects, the unseen, unknown, unknown parts of ourselves. Or maybe they're just forgotten and they want to be remembered. And so I do have like something to share about that because I was actually looking at some old documents today. I used to write a lot on the computer back uh, when I was on social media. And now it's been almost a whole year, October 1st. It'll be a freaking year since I've been off Facebook and I can't even believe it. Like it's just been, yeah, it's just wow. I can't even believe it's been a year now. So um, I was just kind of going back and looking at some of my, you know, just just typing up stuff because I just felt like, oh, I need to express this. And, and or like I would save quotes because, man, I just love like all of the wisdom, like everything that I don't know. I just I just collect it and I gather it to me because I'm just like, yes, <laughs> this, is, this is like going to be part of my Bible, you know, <laughs> so. I have this it was perfect for me to see today and this was all about uh, our shadow and our our dark our dark side and our light side and we just had the equinox and so making the room and making the space for both to be and that um, that whole and that duality and the collective and individuality you know all of that so it's all about the balance, you know, coming into that balance and living in that harmony and walking in that harmony, walking in a sacred manner, walking in balance, walking in beauty. And so I'll just read a few of these things that relate here. Every person has a dark side. What defines a person with good character is not a spotless life of constant kindness, smiles, and even temperament. But rather, it's the yearning to learn from your mistakes, applying it, making amends for them, and choosing not to repeat them that defines good character. These are the friends to keep in your life because they have stared adversity in the face and become a better person because of it. And that was by Shannon L. Alder, Never or Forever. So the next little thing I have here in this document, I choose to live my life for me to be my love, to set me free. I am my love, my love for me. I am my gift, the gift of me. My own beloved, my love for me. My all, my love, my everything. Choosing my life for all of me and learning to love me, to set me free. Completely free to be all of me, all I choose, all I want, all I need for all of me. I choose my love for all of me, to know me, to love me, to forgive me to understand me, to look deeper into me and see more about me, the whole gift of me 
and my whole unique being, all my love for me. Encouraging, yeah, every being to be that love they need. Onward, inward, and outward. Onward, inward, and outward. Keeps me going. Much more life for me to choose and live with a whole lot of love for me, we, creator, attitude. To be, share, give, and receive all that life is. Love always, always. The darkness we see in others is only created by the fears we fill within, the fear of letting down our, wall, our own walls, the fear of letting others see us for who we really are, which in turn does not let us see through the walls of others. So let me read that again. The darkness we see in others is only created by the fears we feel within, the fear of letting down our own walls, the fear of letting others see us for who we really are, which in turn does not let us see through the walls of others. This is why so many these days appear as dark as they do, as we have forgotten the spectrum of our spirit and have neglected the work of facing our own shadow, for there needs to be cracks in our walls to illuminate our darkness. But most of us are afraid to peer into the cracks to see what lies beyond the curtain of reality, keeping ourselves locked in the shadows of our own cave of fears, which only allows the shadow beast to grow within. We all carry a beast, yet most only suppress it, which is why it explodes when we are pushed into any corner. Yet most of us will still deny the existence of our shadow and try to ignore it, leaving us only like a deer caught in the headlights when conflicts arise before us. Look how nature handles the inner beast as a lion can be gentle as an ordinary house cat, but when it feels threatened, it can unleash the fury of the spirit possessed within. The lion does not suppress its energy and it does not waste it only to protect its image, which is how we should be living instead of being a slave to our unconsciousness. Many of us let the anger beast out to protect the image of our ego, which is just like protecting a ghost, as our energy is only wasted protecting the story of who we think we are. Our image is only a myth. The stories we tell each other, many of us alter these myths by changing past events into our favor, or we proclaim the dreams of the future as our story, but these are only visions and memories that have no existence in this moment. A lot of energy is wasted on protecting these false images when our energy is meant to be co-creating today within this present moment. Look closer at the world that surrounds us for it serves as a mirror of everything we possess inside ourself. The more you ignore in the outer, the more we ignore in ourself. The great mystery of life is not discovered by speaking of that which we do not know of. The great mystery is discovered within seeing and feeling what we ignore by shining a light on our own inner darkness. The world transforms around us like magic. The time has come for our inner beast to roar, to show our true self and let go of the hoax of our ego ghost. For the moment has arrived for the lion to sleep no more. And that was by Alistair, or Alistar Valadez. And that, uh, yeah, it was something that I found on Facebook, uh, who even knows when. But yeah, I'm glad I saved it in a doc because that was great to find today. And here's one more last little thing before I say farewell for now. In each of us lie good and bad, light and dark, art and pain, choice and regret, cruelty and sacrifice. We're each of us our own chiroscuro. Yeah, not sure. <laughs> Our own bit of illusion fighting to emerge into something solid, something real. We've got to forgive ourselves that. I must remember to forgive myself because there is a lot of gray to work with. No one can live in the light all the time. And that's by Libba Bray. L-I-B-B-A-B-R-A-Y. I marvel at how even the wrong choices can keep us on the right path, how the worst mistake can wind up being the best thing that ever happened to us. That's Katie Klein, Cross My Heart. So yeah, there's some good things to contemplate. And there's one last little thing I forgot about and just remembered. <laughs> Thank you for remembering. <laughs> yes, um, this is from a Cheney Nicholas article uh, from 2018, and it was the story of Anana and Ereshkigal. And I just wanted to read just a small part of this because I just keep getting this story so much lately. And it's one of my favorite um, 
stories and I'm like actually surprised when I ask people if they've heard it and they don't know they haven't heard and I was just like wow I thought it was like a little more um known than it than it is or than like yeah the responses that I get like hardly anyone's aware of it and I'm just like wow isn't everyone aware of this story and I'm just like kind of surprised sometimes like by certain things that I'm aware of that I think everyone's aware of but and it's just like interesting uh to remember and to realize that not everybody's aware or knows the things that I know and yeah and it's okay like but it just kind of helps me remember that uh that yeah it's like maybe yeah just share a little bit more um with others because sometimes they make assumptions that like oh everybody knows this stuff because i know it like you know and then it's just like maybe not like maybe people are you know waiting for these stories and so i wanted to share this i want to offer this with love to all to all who want to receive and i'll put the uh the link in the description box and so Cheney Nicholas had written this article when Venus was stationing retrograde in October of 2018. And so she told this story of this very ancient myth, this Sumerian myth. So she says, retrograding every 18 months, the myths associated with Venus's backward motion are of the goddess's great descent. Venus was known as Inanna by the Sumerians. Her famous underworld journey is a tale of reckoning, awakening, and integrating the powerful material of the unconscious into consciousness. Called one day by her sister, Ereshkigal, goddess of the underworld, Inanna descends to her realm. Ereshkigal is the opposite to Inanna's beauty, glory, and adoration. She is the sister betrayed, feared, unloved, alone, rejected. Her pain has distorted her. Her hunger for love left unjustly unfulfilled. Ereshkigal is the aspect of Inanna, the aspect of us all that lives just under the surface waiting for our consciousness to open to its call. When she reaches her sister in the underworld, Inanna is met with a death stare that annihilates her. Her corpse is then hung on meat hooks, left to rot where no one can reach her. The only beings that come to her aid are two magical helpers who appease Ereshkigal by witnessing her pain acknowledging it and mirroring her struggle back to her. These beings echo Ereshkigal's cries and wails, and for the first time, Ereshkigal is relieved of her pain because she is related to, accepted, given some compassion for her struggle. In return for this kindness, she gifts them Anana's body, and the goddess is reborn. Ascending to the great above, Anana is renewed, but is never the same. Now fully awakened by coming into contact with the pain of her other half, Anana is, for the first time, a queen truly worthy of her crown. Ereshkigal is the deep reservoirs of power that lay within the unconscious. We cannot come into contact with our full potential until we are willing to descend into our underworlds, reckoning with the truth of what has happened to us. The struggle of marrying the unconscious and the conscious, the queen of the great above and the queen of the great below, is a process of transformation so intense and painful we can only do it in the underworld. We need deep caverns, incubators, and safe places to grieve and reunite with ourselves. The collective rage that is being unleashed in this moment is incredible, undeniable, irreversible, ancient. This has been a year of opening ourselves to the howls of Ereshkigal. We are all being asked to meet her, acknowledge her pain, and invite in the lessons and wisdom of this myth. We are not above the forces that threaten to pull us under, but we are undoubtedly made more whole when we can hold space for our broken and still beautiful selves. Oh man, I love that. We are not above the forces that threaten to pull us under, but we are undoubtedly made more whole when we can hold space for our broken and still beautiful selves. Ah, that's so beautiful. And I love that. And with that lovely offering, I'm reminded of this prayer Sunii, 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 and that's Sanskrit for listening. I believe I'll I'll put this in the uh, in the description link. This is just a painting, a paint, a poor 
a little pour that I did like a couple years ago and it reminded me of like the earth and the ocean and everything and I just decided to put the lyrics of this uh, beautiful chant and song on this uh, because it felt right and it was just like something that I could use for my meditation and to help me remember and um, what it means is is listening the siddhas, the beings of spiritual uh, perfection, or maybe the ultimate, <laughs> the spiritual teachers, heroic warriors, yogic masters, listening the earth, its support, and the akashic ethers, listening the oceans, lands, and people of the world, and the nether regions of the underworld, listening, death cannot touch you, O oh, Nanak, the devotees are forever in bliss, listening, pain and sin are erased, listening, pain and sin are erased, listening, pain and sin are erased. And all is well, all is well, and all is healed, and all is whole, all is well. So may you be well, may you be happy, may you be peaceful, may you feel held, may you feel loved, may you feel held, may you feel well, may you feel mm, everything you need to feel so you can claim your well. All right. I love you all. And thank you. Thank you for you. Thank you for showing up and being you as only you can do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time.